thanks for joining us for this special mini series of the podcast where we're talking to business owners to see how they're handling the coronavirus pandemic. And I'm sure you're tired of hearing those words, but we're doing it anyway. Um, so today I'm joined by the one and only Erica Tebbins, my go-to for sales advice. Erica is a business strategist and coach for highly motivated female and gender expansive entrepreneurs and the host of the Sell It Sister podcast, where you'll learn how to hit your sales goals without the hustle or the headache. Thank you so much for being here, Erica. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this. Yeah, me too. And I'm excited to get your perspective out there because I've really, really like taken solace in your posts and being okay with the fact that I'm like laying on the couch in my pajamas for the third day in a <laughs> row, you know, and not feeling that urge to be overproductive. Yes. Yes. Um, so we'll just dive right in. So okay. what is the biggest shift you've had to make in your business in the past couple of weeks? Yeah. So I will say uh, I am very fortunate in that my kid is 15 and he has already been homeschooled. So that part is not abnormal to have him around while I'm working. Right. Uh, and my husband fortunately can work from home and we have like a whole separate area of the house that he's in. So we're not right on top of each other. Um, so we're kind of in a good flow of all of us being under the same roof during the day. Yeah. I would say the biggest shift has really been more of like a mindset shift in that I simply need to stay the course and that I have value to add to the conversation in a way that does not add to the anxiety that we are all already feeling. So there hasn't really been anything uh, in my like marketing per se that I've adjusted greatly. Right. Uh, it just so happened that my podcast episodes that were already scheduled are around course creation, which mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are, especially if they've been in person service providers are like, Oh my gosh, I, maybe I do need to create a course or maybe they were thinking about it. And this was sort of like the extra little push to get going on that. Um, but really like the only thing I've added in is a, a short, um, one-time session for people who are now homeschooling and running businesses where I can help them rearrange their days so they can figure out how to get everything done on top of it since that's been my reality for a decade. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's super relevant right now. And I have found like it's, for me personally, I do want to create something like creating with this extra space is something that I've been feel like I'm called to do, which is why I'm doing this podcast, because it gives me a way, an outlet for that creation. But like, I think the course is perfect too. And I think going along with your scheduled plan, like what you already had planned for this time, which is sticking to the plan is what I've been telling a lot of my clients, like modify if you need to, but for the most part, we're just sticking to the original plan. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge for people too, to not feel like they have to create this whole new business thing. To get through yeah. these no, not at all. And I think really, uh, because I always batch record my podcast episodes. So yesterday I was doing all of April's and I was going to kick it off with an interview about hiring and stuff. And so that all that did was it just shifted later in the month. And I included two more episodes at the beginning of the month that are a little bit more timely. But I I know some people have had to really go in and like, if their their post their scheduled post sounded really tone deaf or insensitive, yeah. like obviously that's something to consider. Um, luckily, that was not something I had to worry about. Uh, but really, for me, it's like continuing to stay the course and just you know trust that this will pass eventually, and that people still need help with their sales and marketing strategy, and so. I don't have to show up perfectly or with a lot of gusto if I'm not feeling it, but just to remind people like, hey, I'm here. And that doesn't mean I'm here if you want to, like, if you need to pay me right now or want to pay me right now. But like, even if you just want to DM me an idea you have, like, I'm here. I'm happy to, to be that, that sounding board for you. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate you having that open door too, because it is nice to be able to reach out to someone and ask those questions because sometimes even just as an entrepreneur who works from home most of the time, it can get lonely 
So just yeah. a sounding board is helpful. So how is your audience responding to some of these little shifts you're doing, like the stay at home and running a business course or the homeschooling and running the business course? Yeah. So that one offer, um, so it, it really, it's just like a 30 minute private one-to-one um, called uh, Prioritize to Profit. And I, I like literally just, it was just yesterday I finally put it up and it, you know, there's no be- bells and whistles, just a really short info page on it and stuff. Um, I really encourage people, especially with some offers, like you don't need to overthink it. You don't need all of the like pizzazz of a longer form sales page. Uh, especially for like a lower cost offer. And um, so, yeah, so that is like a private one. And then um, with the podcast episodes, so my most recent ones were uh, how to create a course and then how to sell a course. And um, one thing I did right the week before was all about questions to ask yourself before creating a new offer. So it was was all very... It ended up being very timely, um, just out of coincidence. And so... I've sort of really been leaning into the fact that like you might not need to create any new offers right now. Um, and that, you know, if you want to learn about creating and selling a course, you could certainly listen to my podcast episodes. And then yesterday I shared in my Instagram stories, like some, uh, four people who are in the course creation and like launching, Mm -hmm. uh, stratosphere online who I really love and admire. So I tag them to be like, if this is really something that you want to go full force with, these are four people who I, I know, like, and trust. Um, so those people reached out and they were like, oh my gosh, thank you for you know the nice shout out. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do it. But overall, I would say with what I've been posting, um, I'll be totally honest, I've been really behind in batch posting on Instagram lately. And so I've just kind of been doing things off the cuff yeah. and trying to be you know, transparent and, um, and, you know, vulnerable without being icky and weird. Uh, but I've had such a good response and I, and I wasn't even coming at it from a marketing perspective, Mm -hmm. but just people being like, thank you for what you're posting. I really appreciate it. Um, and, and just people reaching out, you know, like you reaching out or I'm doing two online summits next week where people are like, you know, people want to learn how they can sell right now. And so I think just, just really being reminded that like marketing doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be so high level and you don't have to overthink it. It can literally just be like showing up and holding space for people. Exactly. And space has been a word that's come up a lot of times for me during, during this period. But I think marketing in a lot of ways is just taking action. Like it doesn't, even for me with this podcast, there were a million things I could do to make it prettier or to, you know, all, but all of these things were going to prolong it. So I just decided like, okay, let's just do it. And I just started reaching out to people and everyone said yes. And I was like, oh shit, I guess I better like (laughs) get this together, you know? And so that's, but that action has really helped me and motivated me. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm doing something I'm creating. And it doesn't have to be this long drawn out, beautiful, like web page design this, that would take me hours. I'm just going to do it and it'll evolve how it needs to. And that's okay too. And yeah. that's during this time period, like in general, when you're doing something new. Yeah. It's really, it's really true. Like A lot of times it's just the, you know, being consistent and showing up and showing up doesn't have to be a huge grand thing. And I think, you know, there, there are ways depending on what it is you sell, like there are ways to speak to what is happening. There are ways to um, be relevant and considerate, but you know, we are, we are under no obligation as online entrepreneurs to entirely close up shop. Like we, we are not evil people who are selling baby formula at a 300% markup on Facebook groups, right? Like, no, yeah, we're not, we, we are selling things that help others. And so it's perfectly okay for us to just keep doing that. Yes. That's awesome. And so in the middle of all of this, I know not a whole lot has changed in your day to day, but how are you taking care of yourself? Yeah. So I am very, very, very glad that where I live in Michigan, so not super far from you, it's, you know, the days are getting nicer. 
uh, I recently bought a bike. So I've been trying to go out and go for bike rides and, or, you know, go for walks, do at home yoga, things like that. Um, I've, I'm also an extrovert. And so I've been doing more like zoom chats with Mm -hmm. friends, which has been really lovely. And then I, I bought a, like a sloth puzzle because it's just (laughs) funny and cute and so I just, I've been like watching mindless television and working on my puzzle and it feels really good. Like, like I think, especially for online entrepreneurs, part of why I geek out over, over time scheduling and like work scheduling and workflow stuff is because we can kind of just work around the clock. Like it, right. it can spill over into every area of our lives at any time. Mm-hmm. So I'm a big believer in like, I'm still keeping my weekends kind of sacred as my weekends. I'm still not trying to work at night, those sorts of things. Yeah. I think that's super important for people, especially those transitioning to working from home for the first time is setting those boundaries and putting the computer away and making sure family time or like we have um, my fiance's daughters with us 50% of the time, but he's still working and her mom is still working. So I'm able to modify my schedule to help with her, which yeah. is nice with a flexible schedule. And then to set those boundaries and just let people know like, okay, next week I'm working Wednesday through Friday and Monday through Tuesday, I'm on stepmom duty. So, you know, I'll be checking emails, but not really in the mix. And so I think setting clear boundaries is super helpful right now. Yeah, it really is. And then um, just to wrap it up, how can we support you and your business right now? Yeah. So gosh, I feel like there, there are several ways that you can hang with me. So as you mentioned, my podcast, Sell It Sister, comes out every single Wednesday. Right. And then I just opened um, a little bit early a Facebook group called Scale It Sister. And so uh, that was intended, I was going to open it April 1st, and it's going to be sort of just like an ongoing, um, I'm going to do some free trainings in there uh, throughout the course of, you know, the spring and and the summer. And so I decided I was like, uh, I'm just going to open it a few weeks early and people can hang in there and uh, just, you know, again, to hold, to hold space for people. Um, And then I am on Instagram probably more than any other social platform. So I'm over there at Erica Tebbins Consulting and I really, I love meeting people and I love, uh, you know, when people say hi and, and yeah. in there, like I have some links. So there's um, links to my no sleeve sales method, which is also at um, bit.ly forward slash no sleeve selling. And if you want to, you know, tinker around and learn about my other services, um, ericatebbins.com is a, is a great place. But if you're like, ah, this was a lot, like I'm just going to follow her on Instagram and then (laughs) find her DMs and be like, what were all those things again? Like you can just ask me, I'm happy to help. (laughs) Yes. And she does respond. That's how we know each other because Instagram, we in real life or anything. We're closer, a lot closer now than we were before you moved, but Maybe. I know. I know. I had all these plans. I know so many cool women entrepreneurs in Chicago. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to take a trip and meet up with all of them. And now we're all on lockdown. So, yeah, so we'll go back to being online friends yeah. for now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your perspective and all this helpful information. And um, we will find you on Instagram and really send her a DM. She's going to answer. I promise. Yeah. I really will. Erica Tevin's consulting. Say hi. Even if you don't have a question, just say hi. I love it. (laughs) Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. 